Hey, it's Elisha Jerry again with uh, Music Culture. Um, today I would love to talk about a philosophy of music. Um, let me say a philosophy in music that we we mostly neglect, right from the guest ministers, uh, the host ministers. We tend to neglect some of those things. The fact that you've written a song and um, many people sing it does not mean that uh, your audience that you might have at the moment knows the song. So uh, there's this uh, syndrome that is always affecting us. Mostly we go out as guest ministers to a particular setting, to a particular event, to, or to a particular concert, let me say it that way. You go to a concert and 60% um, of your audience understands basically not English, but a native language. But because now your song is in English, you tend not to communicate to them. You tend not to tell them what... Um, you you refuse or you choose to be speaking the English language that only 40% or 30% understands. Uh, in that way, you end up not capturing or not getting the attention of the people. When you are in a Hausa setting, make sure you learn how to speak Hausa. Make sure you learn how to communicate in Hausa. And if you've written songs in Hausa, uh, make sure you use them very well. That's the moment where you can you can pass the message. And if you are where you are, if you are in a place where English is dominant, then you are free to use the English. Then you crisscross with Hausa and any other language that is also dominant there. And um, mostly, sometimes it's not even our fault. The guest ministers. Rather, the host ministers, mostly, they don't tell their guests what they have. Before you invite someone to your congregation, make sure you, you explain your congregation to the person. Ah, this is my congregation. Oh, these people, they can speak Hausa very well. Oh. So if you communicate to them in Hausa, they will understand very well. But oh, these people can speak English very well. Oh. If you speak English, so that your English song, if you sing it here, it will make, it will make impact very well but mostly we don't do that we always we just invite you just invite for inviting sake everybody wants to be in your flyer and they are just here and you come clueless you don't know anything about the congregation and um when you are singing sometimes or when you are teaching or when you are acting anything they will sit down and be looking at you as if you are not doing anything good meanwhile you don't know that these people are not flowing with you because the communication means it's a bit um, maybe advanced for them or maybe that's not what they are used to. So I will advise as a musician, if you are going somewhere to minister or to perform, know your audience, know what they have, study the environment, know what the environment can accumulate know how the atmosphere operates so that when you are there and you are performing you flow with people i think that's one of the magic that um secular artists mostly have they talk to you they communicate to their audience they shout pigeon they shout afro language linguas they to their audience and that's what makes them unique so try to be unique also. It's not everywhere you'll be speaking English and it's not everywhere you'll be speaking outside. It's not everywhere you'll be speaking Igbo and it's not everywhere you'll be speaking Yoruba. Where do you find people speaking Yoruba? Speak Yoruba. When you see people speaking Hausa, speak Hausa. So that, uh, that calls for, uh, for you to be versatile in learning the languages that are around you. Cheers. Hey, it's Elisha Jerry again with uh, Music Culture.
um, today I would love to talk about a philosophy of music. Um, let me say a philosophy in music that we we mostly neglect, right from the guest ministers, uh, the host ministers. We tend to neglect some of those things. The fact that you've written a song and um, many people sing it does not mean that uh, your OD 